Okay, for all you extremely crazy gardeners like me, this is a, a good advice on trying to establish tropicals here in the Phoenix Valley or the desert where temperatures can be very extreme. We'll be down in the upper 20s in the winter and all the way up to 120 in the summer with uh, blazing Arizona sun and dry heat. And then in the monsoon season, you get that moist, sticky heat. But to establish that, you need microclimates like this giant sisal tree I have here on the east side of my carport. It's about 40 feet tall, 30 feet wide, providing a lot of shade, filtered light. But because when I open this up, except for that one branch you got to get out, I get a lot more morning sun in here now. It's providing a lot more morning sun all the way till about noon. So these uh, Suriname cherries right here this year are starting to fruit. You can see some of the cherries on there starting to turn red, but they should be dark purple because this is the sweeter black variety. So pretty soon we can try those. And my mangoes that got damaged from the falling branches that I cut. Looks like they healed up and they're starting to grow new leaves. This is the coconut cream. That's all new growth coming out. Tips have all got some new leaves coming out. Got some new leaves in the middle. Ice cream. Not really growing a whole lot. But it does have, it does want to try to hold on to a mango there. Look at that. I probably have to pull that off. I'd rather have the health of this tree growing up. I'm going to fertilize it. I made some fermented beet juice, which is something I learned from uh, some people that grow a lot of mangoes. So I got that cooking up for the past couple of months, fermenting. But uh, these tropicals in here do a, get a lot more established with some uh, afternoon shade and to cut back the wind that's where I put these uh, red Slavosky uh, pomegranate hedge cut down the wind because in the springtime we get a lot of wind you see it's kind of breezy today and over there I got Barbados cherries and there's Barbados cherries on there but I'm trying to block the wind out here for the spring because I got the banana you can see it's already getting wind ripped whipped frayed leaves from all the wind. Those are some avocado trees I just came up from seed. I just had some rotten avocados, cut them in half and bury them. And they do very nicely uh, that way. I have another one that's already three feet tall. But the guayabas I have up in the front by the street, my pink guava, the ruby red supreme, I probably had about 40 guavas already. So that uh, harvest is already pretty much complete, but it's flowering again. All these flower buds is going to give me a second harvest. Right, maybe a third harvest because all these are still growing on it. And the Taiwanese white guava, almost ready. Get some new flowers, but it probably has about 40 white guavas on it that are almost ready. They're starting to get more pale. Getting ripe. These get more sun. That's why I have them on the south side. They get sun year round. Except for the summertime, we'll get um, some, some shade for most of the day. But these can take full sun. And you can see I'm uh, gonna be wood chipping here in a minute. Just cut my moringa, my fastest growing tree that I have. One of the first things I planted from seed, there's actually two trees there, but you can see all the new growth on it. So I cut all the old branches off because I only had half of, half of them cut out until after the freeze was over or the frost date. So it was protecting my bananas back there. But I get to chip all this beautiful Moringa wood and leaves and flowers it makes great mulch. 
but uh, this is a great microclimate for my tropicals here with the banana and I have that baby mango that I started from seed back there and so it gets the microclimate with the walls and the moringa and it has been doing very well and by the time it gets hot here again this uh, moringa is going to be shading the banana again so it's getting a little sun right now but it doesn't get a whole lot and then here we have the old hami bamboo it's uh, taller than my gabled end so on the north side of that I plant stuff it's trop tropical in nature so I just put a brand new planting here this is a dwarf Namwa banana so we're gonna have another banana grove here on the north side and it's right close to the house which would also help to protect it and keep it warmer in the winter this uh, stick right here it looks like it's half dead, but it's not. It's just waking up. Usually in May, it starts getting all its leaves again. This is my blackberry jam fruit. Another part of my microclimate. But it's getting all its new leaves. It'll be flourishing with green growth in the next month. But back there, that's my Michelina Alba Joy Perfume tree, which is a very tropical. They make uh, joy perfume out of the flowers. They're extremely fragrant. Look, look at those leaves. They're beautiful. It really likes being next to the house and protected by the bamboo. So that's another tropical that's uh, getting help from the microclimate. And back here on the chicken run, you can see right in here, I have right in the middle, I have a Arizona Vipa avocado tree. It looks uh, very healthy. But it's right next to a, another pomegranate tree. So it's kind of sandwiched between that and my ice cream bean tree, which is, uh, I just cut back because it's been growing pretty vigorously and it's already given me a few flowers. So hopefully we'll try those ice cream beans. There's an apple tree that's gonna be growing in right next to this, it needs more sun, so I have it out here. But behind there, I have a star fruit and another avocado tree. This avocado was getting protection from that other moringa that I just cut back. But I've been seeing a whole bunch of uh, baby avocados on here. There's more than a dozen I see, maybe even 20. We'll see how many hang on this year. But I did cut it back to force it to stop growing up and start fruiting. Chickens help to fertilize this. And we can go around the corner here to the north side of the chicken run with all these mulberries. I've been picking Pakistani mulberries and the ever-bearing mulberries. If we go back here, we can see behind the mulberries. If I can move this. Oh, oh another Pakistani mulberry. Oh. Chicken's got that one. Lucky you guys. I was about to ready to grab it. But on the north side here, there is a fig that's gonna be shading the shed. But that's where I planted my my loquat, my sherry loquat. And it really likes the spot. It's getting nice fertile soil. Right next to the duck pond. It's like, it's like they stepped on it and made all the water drain out. But it's all new growth on top. Looks like it's getting ready to flower too. Maybe we'll actually have some fruit this year. But it's on the north side of this mulberry. Look at all these mulberries in here. I already, I gotta pick these every day. Otherwise the chickens eat them all. But, see there's tons of ripe ones. New ones, half ripe. And then my papayas right here. coming around to the north side of the house because it's about four o'clock it's getting lots of sun right now but during the hottest part of the day and the full sun of the afternoon even in the peak of summer in uh, june and july uh, it gets a lot of shade at the peak of the day especially on the trunks so basically all your leaves will be out in the sun winter time doesn't get hardly any sun at all 
but spring, spring through fall, it gets uh, a lot of sun in the morning and late afternoon, but not at the peak of day. And you see this uh, Catley Guava is getting tons of blooms on it opening up. So I think we're gonna get our first strawberry guavas to eat. And this fruit punch mango has gone insane in producing mangoes. They're starting to get a little bit bigger. See how many hold on. I might have to, it looks like a lot of them are gonna drop off, which is fine. You don't want it to break the branches and uh, waste all its energy and a ton of fruit when it's only seven feet tall. And uh, this is another tropical on the north side of my house, my Jabotacaba Brazilian grape. With all that new growth, it's looking very, very healthy this year. So this uh, microclimate for the tropicals is doing very nicely. And over here on the north side of my house, in between my family room and kitchen, there's a little cubby here that, uh, well, I call it my Hawaiian section because it's got the plumeria, it's got a, a lychee that's been flowering, so we should see the fruit developing on that one. And there's a pineapple plant down there, some kale lilies, and probably in about another month you'll see the turmeric pop up. So this is another small microclimate on the north side of the house. It doesn't get any sunlight right now, but it gets morning sun up until about one. And also using this old half dead tree to provide a microclimate for now while the other trees are growing, especially my tropicals, like the, the long gun that's got an abundance of fruit right now. This is where I got my dragon fruit trellis. You don't want to have that in full sun in Phoenix because it'll burn, burn, burn. And here in Southern California, you can get away with it, but not here in the desert. And behind there, you can see a star fruit, another tropical. So those are some tropicals that I have with my microclimates that have really, really helped and I've learned a lot from it. So if this helped you guys at all, then uh, it's a win for both of us. Have a great day, guys.